Yeah, uh, so hello, my name is Holger Baumgart. I'm a researcher here at the University of Queensland and uh, my topic is mainly, uh, I work on star clusters and also uh, galaxies and galactic uh, nuclei. Okay, so um, the age of a star cluster, or basically the easiest way uh, to estimate the age of a star cluster is uh, to have a look at uh, the stars which are in a cluster. So um, what astronomers do is they use uh, CCDs and uh, measure the brightnesses of stars. And then if one uh, measures the brightness of stars in uh, different bands, then one uh, can uh, plot what astronomers call uh, a color magnitude diagram. So basically a color magnitude diagram uh, that compares the uh, brightnesses of stars on uh, one axis, that is, for example, astronomers call that uh, MV, for example, if one looks at the brightness in the V-band, which is a certain optical band. And on the X-axis, astronomers uh, put the difference in, uh, in brightness in two uh, different photometric bands. So something that they, uh, for example, do is compare the brightness in the V-band with the brightness in the so-called B-band, which is uh, a blue band. So when astronomers uh, uh, plot such a, a color magnitude diagram, so what uh, happens is basically the bright stars will end up here and the faint stars will end up down there. So you have bright and faint uh, down here. And uh, if they compare uh, brightnesses in different bands and for example calculate something which they call V minus B, so that's the brightness in the V band minus the brightness in the blue band, then uh, very um, blue stars and these are hot stars because anything which is hot uh, radiates uh, very energetic photons, it's therefore blue. So the hot stars will end up here and uh, the cold stars will end up here. Yeah. Okay, so that's uh, basically a color magnitude diagram. And uh, then if one uh, has a look at the distribution of stars, then the distribution of stars which belong to a certain star cluster is not uh, completely random in such a diagram, but instead they follow or lie uh, very close uh, to a line in this diagram. This is called an isochron. And that is given by the, just the theory of stellar evolution. I mean, as I said, you have the faint, and that's also low mass stars uh, down here. They will be very cold and not uh, shine very brightly, while on the other hand, the very massive stars, like which have 10 times the mass of our sun or so, uh, they sit up here. They will be uh, very hot, they are very blue, and they are also very bright. Yeah, so that's uh, basically something uh, which one can do. Uh, one can plot uh, color magnitudes diagrams uh, for uh, different clusters. And then the effect uh, which one sees is basically, I mean, if one looks at a very young cluster, which is only a few million years old, uh, then you have uh, stars of all kinds of masses still in the cluster, even the very massive stars, they are still on the main sequence and they are still shining. And therefore, the, the uh, isochrome uh, goes really up to the very brightest stars, still for very young clusters. So that would, for example, be a cluster which is uh, 10 million years old. However, if one looks at uh, more and more older clusters, uh, then all these uh, massive stars here, they start to uh, die away. So they simply run out of fuel after a few million years, and then they uh, disappear from the color magnitude uh, diagram. They become uh, neutron stars or black holes, and then they would be very far down here. And so therefore, uh, the uh, color magnitude diagram of a star cluster uh, does change with time as the cluster uh, is aging. So for example, if you look at a giga year old uh, star cluster, then the uh, color magnitude diagram will look li like something like that. So all these stars here uh, have disappeared. Mm -hmm. I just make it like this. So you get a stellar distribution, which is something like that. So that would be say one uh, giga year. And then if you look at a 10 giga year old cluster, then this point where you don't see stars anymore has uh, went down even further because more and more stars have died away. And then you get uh, something like that. So basically by looking at the color magnitude diagram of a cluster and uh, then comparing this with uh, theoretical isochrones, uh, one can determine the age of a star cluster. So uh, which is the best uh, star on that sequence to estimate with? Yeah, that, that's basically um, the point uh, where stars uh, start to deviate uh, from the so-called main sequence of a cluster. Because I mean, on the main sequence, 
I mean, there's very little evolution for V-stars as the cluster old ages until um, they really start to turn into giants, and then they very quickly uh, deviate from from uh, such an, from the so-called so uh, main sequence isochrone. So basically, when you want to look for an age of a star cluster, you really have to look uh, where this point is located. Is that, is that called a... Is that, is that a name for that point? Yeah, I mean, this is called uh, the turnover, because, I mean, normally if you go to a higher mass stars, I mean, the, the position of that stars goes always towards the blue side, but then once you reach the turnover, then it goes to the red side again. So if you look at um, a main sequence star, so a main sequence star, that's basically, if you look at the uh, structure of a star, I mean, the structure has an outer part, and it has a core, and as long as a star is on the main sequence, it will always burn hydrogen in its core uh, to helium. So this is the so-called uh, main sequence uh, phase of stellar evolution, and that phase uh, lasts for about 90% of the lifetime of a star. So 90% of its lifetime, I mean, the star will just uh, burn hydrogen into helium in its core. However, at some point, basically all the hydrogen which uh, is in the core of a star uh, has been turned into a helium. And so that means in the core of a star, a star has run uh, out of fuel. And uh, what happens then is basically, instead of um, burning hydrogen into helium in the core, uh, the star now uh, starts to burn hydrogen into helium uh, outside the core. So basically in a shell. No, I mean, you have the helium. This is sitting in the center. I mean, basically all the helium which was uh, in the center previously all the hydrogen which was in the center previously has been turned uh, into helium. But outside the center you still have lots of hydrogen which has not been processed, and that is then uh, basically happening in the so-called giant phase of stellar evolution. Then you have some shell burning, and in this shell, I mean, there is now uh, hydrogen is turned into helium. Outside this shell, you still have uh, lots of um, unprocessed hydrogen. And basically, as the um, star is evolving, I mean, now it's a, a so-called red giant. So that means it moves away from the C main sequence uh, up to uh, this so-called red giant branch of stellar evolution. And uh, here you basically have uh, this uh, shell burning. And um, as the star is moving up uh, this branch, this shell uh, starts to move further and further out. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you always have a certain zone where all the helium or all the hydrogen has been turned into helium. So you cannot at initially you maybe have that. And then if the evolution goes on, then the, the helium core in the center has uh, increased in size. And so you need to go further out uh, to turn hydrogen into helium. So it's, it's basically a matter um, of uh, finding fuel to uh, fuel the uh, nuclear reactions. But I also want to mention, so why does the star become very red? Yeah, exactly. That's also what's happening. I mean, while the uh, star is on the main sequence, it's basically relatively compact. So if you look at our sun, sun has a radius of about 700,000 kilometers uh, in at this stage here now. But as soon as uh, shell burning of uh, hydrogen into helium uh, starts to happen, then also the stars become very, very large. So they, they grow enormously in size. I mean, the sun will about be a factor of 100 or so larger. Uh, during that stage, but at the same time, um, the amount of energy is not increasing that much while the uh, sun grows in size. And so, I mean, you now uh, start to uh, push the same amount of energy through a much larger surface, and that means that the surface temperature uh, will drop. So, I mean, while the stars here on the main sequence are relatively compact and relatively uh, blue also, as soon as they become giants, they become very, very large and uh, the surface temperature will uh, drop to only a few thousand uh, Kelvin, and that means they uh, will become very red. Ah, okay, but yeah, I mean, yeah, but what, okay, what you have down here, I mean, these are basically uh, dwarf stars. So these are stars which have maybe only 20% or 10% uh, the mass of the sun. Okay. And it's known, I mean, there's a, there's a very um, a strong dependency of the total luminosity on the mass of the star. The more massive a star is, uh, the brighter it is. So it's um, typically like that, that if you take a star which is 10 times more massive uh, than another star, then uh, the more massive star will be about a thousand times brighter. 
So, and I mean, when the when you have to look at these giants here, I mean, they are they are of course much more massive than these uh, dwarf stars down here. So the, the size. Yeah. So there's there's first, I mean, it's 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 just a sheer difference in mass, yeah. which gives you a big difference in luminosity. I mean, that's already on the main sequence, uh, like that. And yeah, then it's also, I mean, due to the different uh, stage in which these stars here are. Now, because they are doing shell burning, they are also uh, much brighter. No, that's it. Thank you. Okay, so much. that's it already. Good. <laughs>